Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. This week I'm in the forest embodying goddess Artemis energy. She is the subject of my painting in my sketchbook and I'm using a little bit more of an illustrative style and I actually created this in Portugal and I'm bringing you a more of the stepped out process and my thoughts along the way. And I'm using a very limited palette which I really believe strengthens a composition overall. I do hope that you enjoy it. So sit back and relax. Thank you, everyone. So before I begin, I just want to go over the reason why I chose this particular composition and especially how I like to design with keeping in mind the rule of thirds. And that's where you divide the canvas horizontally and vertically into thirds and putting key elements in, we're at the intersection of those points. So her face, her nose, that is in the upper right hand corner of where those thirds meet. The arrow is below that in that particular intersection. The upper left, the, Roman, the edge of the Roman temple so that your eye is drawn around the canvas to these key elements. I also like to divide the window into thirds so the very top portion contains the buildings and then two thirds, the lower two thirds, contains what is the landscape. And then the background, the top third contains the decorative motif but you can see that the lower two thirds, the brown wall, is very plain and that is so that the eye has a place to rest and so when you know you're looking at this as an artwork your eye is moving around to the key elements and we're not distracted by anything in the background the decorative motif gives you a sense of time you know it just feels older older european in fact it was inspired by these old gates that i photographed now i like to keep a couple scrap pieces of paper when right before i'm about to sketch something that is more of an illustrative style. And of course I could do this in a sketchbook. That is the purpose of the sketchbook. But the reason I do it this way is because it helps me build my confidence. And I didn't want to spend a lot of time erasing and going over because as you'll see, I did my sketch of Diana on top of a painted background. And so because I was also making a video for my YouTube channel, I wanted to draw with that confident feeling. So I really do recommend if you feel a little hesitant, sometimes having throwaway pieces of paper, it really takes the pressure off. The other thing I wanted to mention is when we're drawing a woman's breast, the weight is at the bottom. It's not accurate just to draw kind of a rainbow shape. So just something to keep in mind when you are drawing. For a clean, crisp look, in an illustrative style, I like to use washi tape to create some white borders. So once I paint and I remove the washi tape, I have nice crisp lines all around my painting. And since I'm using quite a bit of water for the background painting, I have my clips so that the pages don't curl. I'm pretty obsessed with acrylic gouache right now, so I'll be using a few colors as well as acrylic paint in burnt umber, and I'll have that in the description for you. I was super inspired by the color of the sky in these three different photos that I took, so these guided my paint selections. So with the acrylic gouache, what's really nice about it is that you can really dilute it with water to get some really soft, smooth washes. And then, you know, wherever you want a little bit more saturation, you just add a little bit more paint. So I want to start off really soft and you can see that I'm building up with the different pinks uh, slowly. And the other thing I want to do is keep some paper towels on hand. That's what I recommend because it's nice to press and lift up color. And you'll see that you can get some really nice texture when you do that. So you'll see me using paper towel here in just a moment. And I hope you can see this on the, on the video, but you can kind of see just a little bit of dappling that happens. And I just really love that. It just adds that extra texture. I'm going to move slow through this so that you can see that 
it doesn't happen really, really quickly. You can see that I'm really moving the brush quite a bit. And when I add the brighter orange, you know, I'm going to use a lot of water intentionally to create that watercolor effect. And obviously it's not watercolors because acrylic wash, one of its attributes is that it has the acrylic in it. So you can, once it's dry, you know, keep adding more paint if you want to, and it won't dilute whatever you've created as it would with watercolor. With watercolor, you would just annihilate your painting if you added more water after it's dry. So this is the beauty of these particular paints. And I love this brand, Holbein. The high quality of the paints is just incredible. They're opaque and saturated and just really gorgeous. So once the background is completely dry, that is when I add my sketch. And you'll see here that despite all of my warm-ups, I still end up erasing her face. My goal was to give her a strong nose and prominent chin. I just sort of imagine she's of Roman descent and they have very angular faces. And I didn't want to create a squarish face. I still wanted her to be soft, which is why I contrasted her stronger facial features with these swirls and this long, soft hair that I imagined for her. But anyway, I wanted just to make the point that, you know, it, it doesn't always turn out the first, second, or even 50th time that you try it something, but just keep at it. And the most important thing is just to enjoy the process as you're going along. Now on my travels, I didn't have a ruler, but you can see here, I'm using just a piece of computer paper for my straight edge for the top. And then I'm working in also the window and I'm just freehanding this and you can see that you know I do have to erase a little I'm using my finger and the pencil to serve a little bit as a measuring guide I didn't want the window to be in the spine of the sketchbook so that's why I moved it just a little bit over this is the inspiration for the artwork as well, the Roman temple I visited in Evora, Portugal. And I mentioned this in that video that I created about the trip, that a priest during the medieval times actually renamed the temple, the Temple to Diana. And it wasn't originally called that. I just love the idea, the notion, that who knows what his experience was at that time, but perhaps, you know, he felt, at least I like to think that he was infusing some goddess energy into his small village. Now, what I love about an illustrative style is that you can keep your forms really simple. We don't have to put in all the details to tell the story of what it is we're trying to convey. Now, I did get a little more detailed with my decorative motif, and that's because I felt like I needed something for myself that I think about Roman times, and I think about those beautiful frescoes, and they were very detailed. And so I just wanted something that had a little bit, a little bit more detail, and so that's why I decided to bring that detail into the decorative motifs. And they're very feminine and pretty, and I just wanted to celebrate the goddess in that way. So goddess Diana, she is also Artemis to the Greeks, and she is the goddess of the hunt, which is why I used a bow and arrow for her symbol on her back. And I'll talk a little bit more about her in a moment. I'm using the gouache right now, and in a moment you'll see me use the acrylic paint, which is the burnt umber. And I love the burnt umber because you can easily mix it and darken colors. For her skin tone, I will mix the pink and a little bit of the yellow with a little bit of the burnt umber. And you can see that it just is a very flexible paint and you can really get some great tones with it in your artwork. So I wanna continue mentioning that Diana is a virgin goddess However, interestingly, she's also a goddess of fertility and she's a fierce protector of women and children. 
And in fact, she was known for helping women get through childbirth. And what all that means to me is, as I interpret it inside myself, is that she's whole unto herself. She doesn't need a counterpart to complete her. She's reliant on her feminine energy and her feminine intuition to guide her. And I love that because being a fertility goddess, she's a symbol for abundance and for new growth and for just the incredible nature that Mother Earth provides for us. And she's, sim she's a symbol for all of that and more. For the wild animals, Artemis actually means bear. The wolf is also one of her animals. I live right next to a forest and it's really wonderful to imagine her in the trees with her quiver and her bow and she is fierce and she's grounded to the energy of Mother Earth. And as a fertility goddess, you know, she's also a symbol for abundance and everything that we see in Mother Nature, she is an embodiment of all of that. Now I'm gonna just pivot here and mention that I'm using the olive and pale lavender acrylic gouache. And these also, well, not the pale lavender, but the olive gets a little bit of that burnt umber as well, just to keep the painting cohesive. And of course, I'm also using the white, and this is the acrylic gouache white that I also blend with my other colors to lighten them. When I'm talking about energy, I am not meaning to imply anything negative about masculine or feminine energy. No one is better than the other. I, for example, embody a lot of masculine energy. I've been very driven in my life and it's enabled me to do some pretty cool things like run triathlons and I tend to have a mind over matter attitude. Energy is just energy. One is not better than the other. However, I feel like more and more I do rely on feminine energy to be a little more grounded and it helps me to be at peace, which is why I really love working with the goddesses. And I'll be creating more goddess-inspired artwork in upcoming videos. So if you're interested in learning more about them, please stay tuned. In fact, I'll even give you a tiny sneak peek into my next upcoming class on Skillshare online, I'll be making a couple goddess-inspired artworks on, in Procreate on the iPad. So if that interests you, please look out for the link that will be coming soon. So now with the little details, you noticed that the only thing I added as far as detail work was the bow and arrow in my sketch, but I didn't add all of the little teenier details like those little tendrils of her hair or even the flower that's sort of hanging from her ear. And the reason for that is I think that it's really fun to allow yourself the freedom for inspiration to come in. I didn't have a plan for those details, but then as I was creating that those ideas came in and it's just really fun for me to be surprised in that way and to add like these little details that feel spontaneous to me and it makes what's what makes the art process so wonderful is that there's a sense of discovery how how is inspiration going to surprise me next what is it telling me and that is that part of the intuition piece that Diana represents for me. And she lives inside of me. I can rely on the intuition. Everybody has their own intu intuition. I mean, just it's just tapping into that awareness. It's a way to be connected to our own inner wisdom. Now here you can see I'm using a Uniball gel pen in gold, and this just is now just the final little details just to give the artwork a little sparkle and here's a Posca pen just framing the window in some little dots and just adding a, you know some little wildflowers in the grass and some highlights. So in order for her to stand out I'm pushing back the lighter background with the darker brown 
and I want it to have a little bit of a darker clay feel and look to it. And so I'm using a combination of all the colors on my palette with that burnt umber. And it's again, I really believe in the power of a limited palette. And notice that I didn't use any black and I think sometimes it's just not necessary. I think you can get those darker values with a color like Burnt Umber or the Van Dyke Brown that is also really pretty. So here you can see a little bit more of the gold. I tried to get the light on it so that it's a little more pronounced. I would like to say some final words about this feminine energy that everybody has access to. And I don't even like to call it feminine. Let's just call it goddess energy. Let's call it Artemis energy. If you are needing to feel more grounded, something that I like to do is just spend some more time in nature. Obviously, you know, we hear that all the time about a way to de-stress and get in touch with nature and it really does work and but to have even just a little more intention about it perhaps think about goddess artemis as you lean into a tree i like to imagine myself growing roots deep into the earth and intertwining with the roots and i feel very anchored at the center of at the core of mother earth and that's how we can use our imagination for our own well-being and our own mental emotional and spiritual and even physical health thank you so much for your attention if you liked my video please do give it a thumbs up thank you so much for subscribing i appreciate it if you already have you guys are awesome and i so appreciate all of your positive comments it's really fun to read so if you have any questions let me know take care everyone